Martin, an extraordinary year, the year of Brexit, the year of Donald Trump elected to be commander in chief for the United States. Looking forward, I'm, I'm wondering whether we should believe anything about forecasts. Well, the interesting point is that the economy's been sort of more or less in line with forecasts. At the beginning of the year, I actually wrote a column on why things might be all right, uh, to point out that what normally triggers a big economic failure is a war or a financial crisis. Didn't look at all likely. And in fact, there's been pretty good economic progress across the Western world. And even some of the emerging economies are beginning to recover. So generally looks quite good. It's the politics that's been shocking. Yeah. And now, will that change next year? I think a lot of it depends on how the political changes of this year will affect the economy next year. Right. There staying, I can see some big things Staying happen. with 2016, you would say then that the political shocks are a result of a earlier economic shock, a sort of a lag effect, if you like, of the global financial crisis. I think that is probably the crucial reason. There were always lots of people who were dissatisfied. Uh, we know that that's been the case for a long time, but I think the financial crisis had the twin effects of making people feel very disturbed, they felt insecure, and it made them, to, to coin a famous phrase, distrust experts. So they've gone for the views of the non-experts, the people who've channeled the rage, the anger, the doubt, and the fear. What about a China? Uh, there wasn't a hard landing in China. Some people talked about that. Other people actually thought that the Chinese economy somehow miraculously would avoid it. So where do you think it'll be in 2017? Well, basically, the Chinese government can keep this system going as long as they can continue to print money and, and generate debt. And that's very much what they're doing. It, it allows them to waste a lot of resources, but they have a lot of resources to waste. Savings are incredibly high. But I believe the underlying growth dynamic of China is slowing continuing to slow. It's being masked Can we to some extent. Can put a extent. number on that? It'll probably grow, in truth, somewhere around 5 6% next year. Uh, but at some point, it's very much like the process in the West before the financial crisis. At some point, this constant moving the crisis into the future will come back and bite them, but it could be years from now. Of course, China growing at 5 or 6% is a great deal better than the Eurozone. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're going to come to America in a minute, but just, just the Eurozone. I mean, are we looking still at terminally tepid growth? Uh, well, right at the moment, I think that would be a very good outcome. I mean, the, let's assume that growth continued in sort of one to one and a half percent range. That would be very good. But there's, it seems to me, quite a lot of risk there. Part of it is political, again. Uh, it, we don't know how Italy's going to play out, but uh, it doesn't look very solidly based. Uh, the politics look uh, insecure, and that can easily generate another economic crisis. And then, of course, there's the French presidential election coming up. I think for the, for the Eurozone, again, it's the politics that creates the economic risks. And the politics are, again, related to the fact that there are a number of economies which have been in huge slumps for a long time, like Italy, or have been close to stagnant for a long time, like France, and the politics are becoming more and more difficult to manage, and that's the core risk. Now, stepping back, if you, if you look uh, at the last seven years, we've had a period of you know, deep, unorthodox monetary policy, ultra-low interest rates. Do you think inflation's going to come back in 2017? I think it Based partly on Trumponomics, if we could dub it that? at this early stage? I think it's very unlikely to come back in a very big way uh, next year. There's still an awful lot of slack in the world economy, and I actually think China is going to generate some more slack, if anything. So I don't think that inflation is going to become a serious problem. But in the US, inflation is now on target. We're going to have a very large fiscal expansion. That's clear. Nobody knows how large. He's a big spender and a, a big, big borrower. He's a big spender. He's a real and a estate big, broker. And therefore, the Fed, I think, presuming it will do its proper job, will raise interest rates. The dollar will be strong, uh, but that will mean that some inflationary pressure will fall on other countries whose currencies will be weaker. So I think we are probably moving out of the period or likely to move out of the period where the dominant concern is that inflation is much too low. It doesn't mean we're going to have a big concern about high inflation. That's something else. That's going to be a longer term issue. OK. A real estate developer. Uh, he might have brokered a few deals, but certainly built a few buildings, Mr. Trump. Uh, 
But overall, do you think it's in any way realistic um, to speak of America growing at maybe three or four percent, as Steve Mnuchin, the uh, nominee for Treasury Secretary, has talked about? Well, I think it's completely unrealistic to imagine that will be the new trend growth rate, that that can be sustained for a very long time. It would involve, imply an in incredible upsurge in productivity growth. But I think in the short term, they might be able to get over three um, with a sufficiently big boost to, to demand. Um, Domestic they, demand? Yes. Big uh, infrastructure programs? Big infrastructure, pulling workers who are now idle into the workforce. The question is, since um, um, unemployment is officially measured is very, very low, uh, is how quickly that will start then transmitting to wages and then to a real inflationary upsurge. Now, in a very big economy like the US, where there's going to be a strong currency as well, that will probably not transmit to inflation for two, three years, maybe even longer. That's what we saw in the 60s uh, and 70s when similar policies were followed. So I don't expect that to happen next year. But in the long run, three to four percent growth is not sustainable in the US. Can we talk about America perhaps being a locomotive of growth in 2017 for the rest of the world? That is certainly uh, what the rest of the world hopes, and I think it is the implication of Trumponomics, as it were, that the Americans will go back to being the sort of locomotive they were when they had the Bush tax cuts in the early 2000s. I believe it will be unsustainable, and I'm worried in the longer run it will trigger dollar and financial instability. Stronger dollar, what does that mean for emerging markets and emerging market debt? Oh, that's a big problem. Those countries that will have weak currencies and a lot of, have a lot of uh, dollar denominated debt, a lot of its corporate debt, they're going to have quite a lot of bankruptcies. Now, the debt is mostly reasonably long term, so the interest rates shouldn't jump too quickly, but the, the valuation effects will be very large because the currencies will fall and particularly these companies are selling in the domestic market they're going to be pushed close to bankruptcy how severe the crisis will be uh, is of course unclear we don't know exactly how that will play out there will be other countries which are made basically exporters to the United States that are going to do rather well out of it China I suspect in all will be actually benefited from this, though not an emerging country, of course, the Eurozone expects to do well as well as Japan. Right. I'm going to keep you on those bright spots, Martin. India, reforms happening uh, under Mr. Modi. Uh, do you see that as a, a potential good growth story in 2017? Yes, I would expect India to continue Tortoise to grow. Tortoise catching up with the hair? Well, it, it will India grow China? faster a bit, though the measurement is uncertain. India should be able to grow 7% or so. The uncertainty is about the measurement. The most recent reform, which is the famous demonetization of currency, looks to me like a terrible mess. But I don't think it'll do in really serious damage to the economy. The underlying dynamic as long as the world economy remains reasonably well behaved, nothing terrible happens, there's no trade war or anything like that, and I'm moderately optimistic of those things. India should be the fastest growing big economy in the world in 2017. Latin America? Brazil? Be after going through a real political crisis, they lost the president, President Dilma uh, Rousseff. Perhaps a, a better story in Yes, I think that basically the countries that were very badly hit by the commodity price fall have mostly come through this and are beginning to show positive signs of growth. Uh, and Brazil is one of them, provided the, the dollar problem doesn't become too severe and the evidence seems to be that it won't. The, the likelihood is that Brazil will have a modest improvement next year. I am not very optimistic about any of them. Argentina might be another case that will look better next year. Mexico really depends on what happens with Mr. Trump and whether he actually goes through with his plan to stop imports, cancel NAFTA. I'm assuming not, um, but that's a big question mark. It's going to be the single emerging country most directly affect, affected by the election of Mr. Trump. Martin, I'm going to put you on the spot. We're going to see a trade war in 2017. That would be, by the way, the darker side of Trumponomics. My assumption is no. And that's mainly for two reasons. First, the, He's all hat and no the, the, the politics 
of tr going all out for a trade war, given the interests of American business, who are so entrenched in his cabinet. I mean, nobody wants this. I mean, they're all so dependent on the international economy. They're not national companies uh, uh, anymore. So they, they are global companies. They want trade to remain uh, open. And uh, the, the two obvious targets are Mexico and China. And these countries, and it will be pointed out by people like Mr. Tillerson and so forth, they're just too important to America to really start messing about with them. So my guess is, but it is perhaps too optimistic, is that it will turn out to mean very little. A cautiously optimistic forecast from our chief economics commentator, Martin Wolf. Thank you so much. Pleasure.